Let's start by first introducing what self-service license purchase even is inside Microsoft 365 and how it affects us as administrators. We will cover what that is by really going a bit to how it happened and where we're at today. In October 2019, Microsoft announced the ability of users to purchase licenses without going through IT, and initially it was to allow users to get premium versions of the Power Platform products, so Power BI, Power Apps, and Microsoft Flow back then, which was the name, and all of this without having to go through IT. There is actually, in the initial announcement, there was no way for IT to turn it off. As you can guess, a lot of administrators were not too happy about this, and this was covered by IT publications, and the user voice request for the ability to block this racked up over 7,000 votes in just a few days, which is honestly a record as far as I know. And luckily, Microsoft listened, and only one month later, there was an announcement postponing the self-service purchase to January 2020 and providing us a way to turn it off for our tenant. And in order to turn it off, Microsoft created a brand new PowerShell module called the MS Commerce PowerShell module, which will be the star of this module that you're listening today on how to manage self-service license purchases. We will get to the how in just a few minutes, but before, let's talk about self-service license purchasing today at the time of recording this course in February 2021. Today, users themselves can buy paid versions of Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, Microsoft Project, and Microsoft Visio without going through an administrator. By default, this is turned on and available for every tenant, but administrators can turn it off only via PowerShell, which is what we will learn how to do in this module. Now that we know the basics of the self-serve license purchasing functionality in Microsoft 365, let's learn how to manage it. This module is on the PowerShell gallery and similar to the other modules in this course, to install the module, we need to run the install module commandlet and specify the name of the module, in this case, MS Commerce and DAX it. Now, in order to connect, you need to either be a global administrator or a billing administrator. So those are very high roles in a way, in terms of what they're allowed to do, but no other role can change the settings for this. To connect to MS Commerce, we will simply run the connect MS Commerce PowerShell commandlet, which will open a login prompt where we enter our credentials and optionally second factor of authentication if you have one configured. In order to view the current configuration, we will run the get MS Commerce product policies PowerShell commandlet on the policy ID called allow self-service purchase. You can see in the screenshot below the different products and in the policy value, you can see if they're enabled or disabled. If you want to disable a single product, we will first need to get the product by using the get MS Commerce product policies and filtering where the product name is Power Automate in this example, and then we will use the product ID in the update MS Commerce product policy PowerShell commandlet, and then we will set the enabled property to false in order to disable self-service license purchase for this specific product. Now that we know the theory, let's go to the lab environment, and see how we can manage self-service license purchasing with PowerShell. I am now in the lab environment 
And first of all, let me open up the browser where I am already in the PowerShell gallery and let's search for MS Commerce, which is the PowerShell module we're looking for. The first one is the one we need MS Commerce by the Microsoft Commerce Platform Experiences team. So let's go inside. And if we look at the version history, you will notice that this module really doesn't get updated often. And even if there's a new product that enables the self-service purchase, a lot of it is done on the back end and you're not gonna have an update to the actual PowerShell module. And similar to the other PowerShell modules, we do have the install commandlet here that we can just copy and paste in PowerShell. Let me close up this browser. Let's go to the PowerShell ISC and let's install the module. I will first get the question if I press the PowerShell gallery to which I will say yes. And actually while this is getting installed, Let's take a look at the user experience. What does it look like for a user when they want to buy their own licenses? For this example, I will use Microsoft Power Automate. So here I'm logged in as Vanessa Lee, which is simply a user in my tenant. No admin rights, no anything. If I go at the bottom here of the page, I will go under pricing and then I have the per user plan. Let me click on buy now. I'm a user. I can click on buy now. So let me click here. It might ask me to sign in, but since I'm already signed in Office 365, it detected my user. I am in Canada. It already detected that I'm part of a tenant. And now I can go buy licenses, even two of them. I can go add a payment method. And here I can, again, as a user with no admin permissions, I can put in my credit card number and then start using a premium version of Power Automate without going through my admins. This might be something that you want to let enabled as an admin, but let's learn how to disable it if we do not want to allow this in our tenant. And I will close the page here so then we can take a look at the result after. I will go back in the ISC here and let's connect. I'll run the connect MS Commerce PowerShell commandlet. Let me enter my username. So Vlad at globomantics.org. Let me enter up my password here. And we got the message connection established successfully. So that's perfect. Now, if we want to see the status of all of the different products in our tenant, we will run the get MS commerce product policies and then use the policy ID allow self service purchase. When I run this, I will see all of the different products. So the ones that currently have this functionality enabled by Microsoft. So we have Power Automate, Power Apps, Visio Plan 2, Visio Plan 1, Project Plan 3, Project Plan 1 and Power BI Pro. We have the product ID and then we have the policy value. As you can see, all of them are enabled right now. So they're all available. Now let's say you want to disable it for a single product or one product at a time. First thing I will do is I'll run the same commandlet, get MS product policies. I will simply add a where clause at the end and say, where the product name is equal to Power Automate. And then I will save this in a variable called product. So if I look in the product now, I have the same information, but just for that Power Automate product. And then to actually update it, I can run the update MS Commerce product policy, the allow self-service purchase policy, give it a product ID property and enabled to false. So let me run it. It does not take any time at all. And now if I take a look at all of my products again, you will see that Power Automate is disabled and the rest of them are enabled. So let's take a look at what does this now look like from an end user point of view. If I go, I click on buy now again, same page as before. It will still detect that I'm logged in. 
But now instead of allowing me to select how many I want to buy and put in my credit card, now I have a message saying, your organization does not allow employees to buy Power Automate per user. However, you can ask your admin to assign it to you and others. You can enter the additional names of people that would need this, as well as a message, maybe a business justification for your admin. So this way, the admin would have to purchase it through the normal channels and then assign it to you as usual. So this is the end user experience. If we go back to PowerShell, you could of course run the same script that we did before. Let's say we want to put project plan three in there, then rerun the get and update. And if we look at the result, we have now disabled project plan three as well. Or if you want to just disable all of them, you can create a nice loop. First of all, we will run a get MS commerce product policies on the same policy ID, save it in a variable called products with an S, and then loop through each one of them. So for each product in products, update the MS commerce product policy for the current product that you're looping on and set it enabled to false. In the past, a few weeks for recording this video, this actually threw some random errors from the backend by Microsoft. Let's see if the demo gogs are with me and it looks like we got the error so I can show it to you. Really, it says failed to update product policy. The remote server returned an error. Precondition failed. However, most of the time it actually worked or if not, you can just run a get again, take a look at all of them. You see it failed for power apps and I can just take the one that has failed here and just update that one individually and then we should be all disabled across the board. Let's double check, there we go. I have really gotten this error in multiple environments on different products so if you get an error similar to this one, it's nothing to worry about. Simply rerun the commandlet, or if not, find a product that it didn't work with in the loop, run it individually, and then you will be good to go. This is it for this demo in which we have seen how to get the MS Commerce PowerShell module. We have even looked at the end user experience for how to buy your own licenses, what it looks like when it's enabled versus when it's disabled. And we have also looked at how to disable it, of course, using PowerShell, both one product at a time or create a nice loop for all of them.